Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over the frigid temperatures which should be expected for early October and also for late September. If this pattern continues into the winter, we could be looking at a very, very cold and snowy winter. We could see temperatures up to 10 to 15, maybe even 20 degrees below normal, and maybe even some snow for parts of the upper Midwest and also for parts of the interior Northeast and also the Rockies. So uh, let's get right into it. Before we do get into it, I do want to say that I'm not taking any more shout out uh shout outs or uh q a questions just because i've already finished editing the video uh so uh for the 1000 subscribers uh shout out and q a video so uh if you have any more q a questions leave them down in the comments and i'll type i'll, I'll answer them in the comments but i won't be answering them in the video just because of co again i've already finished editing that video so if you have any more q a questions leave them down below and i'll still answer them uh but they i just won't answer them in the video so uh, again thank you for getting me this far and hopefully um, I could celebrate the next milestone with you guys so here is uh, the European ensemble model and we're gonna start off a few days in advance now this is 180 hours out so this is uh, a little bit over a week out by this point but we're using the European ensemble model and we'll compare this to the GFS ensemble model so the European and the American ensemble models compile together that's in total, if you add both of them up, around 70 to 80 models in uh, total. The European Ensemble model has 50 models, and I believe the GFS Ensemble model has around 20 or so models. So uh, they are both an averaged out run. So if you if you see a lot of vibrant colors that are near 4 to 5 degrees below normal, that indicates that quite a few models are indicating below normal temperatures. Uh, so we're going to play this through a little bit. We'll compare them, and then we'll look at your, uh, your CPC outlook, your climate prediction center outlook and then potentially that threat of snowfall over parts of the upper great lakes and into the northeast and as well as the rockies now here is your uh cold air mass that's over parts of ontario and also for parts of the great lakes now this would be for tuesday the 29th of september on the european ensemble model now here is for that same time period on the GFS ensemble model. It is a little bit quicker than the European ensemble model, but still, you still you see that cold air still arriving for much of the central United States from the Great Lakes south, uh, southward. Now, here would be by Wednesday. Look how that cold air mass really expands. Now, again, this was for Tuesday. Here is for Wednesday, so it just kind of expands over parts, uh, centered over parts of Wisconsin and Michigan by this point, and all of that cold air is stretching from the Rockies eastward all the way until about the eastern seaboard. Now, again, this would be by Wednesday morning on the European Ensemble model. Here is by Wednesday morning on the GFS Ensemble model, and practically the same scenario, except this one, uh, instead of having the center of the low pressure right around here, it is further to the south. Now, that's not going to be a big difference. You'll still be hilly over much of the eastern half of the U.S. by Wednesday, uh, the last uh, few days of September. So this would be September 30th. Now, here would be by the first day of October, and this is Thursday morning, and uh, this would be on the European and some model. Now, by this point, pretty much the entire east coast is under that cold uh, air mass, and also anywhere to the uh, anywhere going westward all the way until you hit the Rockies is also in that cold air mass and it, now it would be centered over Kentucky and Tennessee by this point now here it would be by Thursday morning on the GFS ensemble model and we're looking at that cold air centered again still over Kentucky and Tennessee with the core of the cold over that region but it kind of expands outward and you're even seeing effects reaching all the way from Maine to about Texas and Oklahoma so it is very far uh, reaching this very very cold air mass now here would be by friday morning on the european ensemble model still the cold air centered still over the southeast but now it's moved a little bit further south into uh probably mississippi alabama or georgia by this point and then here would be that on the GF gfs ensemble model and we're looking at the core of the cold centered a little bit further to the east but still again that very cold air just over a wide a very wide area now here would be uh, by Saturday morning, October 3rd, on the European Ensemble model, and we're looking at uh, most of the cold air centered over the southeast, and here would be for that same time period on the GFS Ensemble model. Now, here would be uh, the G the GFS, the actual just main GFS model, so this is not a compilation of, uh, of a certain amount of models, this is just one model, so this is going to be, uh, this is going to be a little bit more accurate as to what will happen. Now, uh, I like to use the uh, GE 
DFS or the European Ensemble model because it gives you a better averaged out look. But look at this. The uh, the uh, GFS Ensemble model is pointing out probably at a, uh, the maximum probably around 8 degrees Celsius below normal. Now, this would be on the actual GFS and we're looking at temperatures near 12 to 14, maybe even 15 degrees Celsius below normal. So that would be closer to 20 or 30 degrees below normal Fahrenheit. So you can see how the main models are actually a little bit more intense than the ensemble models and that's just because the ensembles are an averaged outlook at multiple models and many many models so that's why here on the GEFS model you're looking at uh, kind of more of an averaged outlook but on the on the GFS model, it's more precise, uh, even though it might not be as accurate, it is showing you more intense values. Now, here would be for the European Ensemble model for Sunday morning, October 4th, so you're already getting uh, fairly far into October by this point, uh, and we're going to go out a couple more frames, and then we'll look at your Climate Prediction Center outlook, and we're looking at still that cold air centered over the southeast. Now, let's continue this one more frame here would be the GFS ensemble model and the cold air is still centered uh, over the southeast except it's a little bit further to the north and then here would be by uh, for the European ensemble by Monday morning October 5th and we're looking at uh, this again being more averaged out the farther out in time you, uh, you go the less intense and vibrant these colors are and uh, the less potent this uh, this cold air uh, this cold air mass seems although it's most likely going to be a lot more potent than this most likely you're going to see temperatures that are near 20 to, 50, to, th uh, to 30 degrees below normal Fahrenheit uh, that's just based off what I'm looking at in terms of the individual models the GFS model indicating between about 12 and about 14 degrees Celsius below normal at its peak uh, and you if you look at a couple of the other models they're pretty much on the same uh, track so I would say between 20 and probably 25 degrees below normal as you get into the early part of October and that would be in Fahrenheit. Now here would be for the GFS ensemble model for that same time period October 5th and we're looking at still uh, much of the eastern United States under some cold air and you even see another reload of cold air over parts of Ontario, Wisconsin and also into Minnesota and then you see that other primary uh, area of low pressure over parts of uh, the central Appalachian. So we have two different cold air masses that are going to be converging and most likely intensifying each other later on in the period now here would be uh, most likely the last frame that we're going to look at and we see again still the entire eastern United States under that cold air and this would be for Tuesday October 6th in the morning and we're looking at still uh, that cold air uh, very potent over in parts of the eastern United States uh, and now let's just finally look at what the GFS ensemble model shows for this and still pretty much the same exact story for the GFS ensemble model so this is going out quite a bit uh, uh, quite a ways out out in time now we're going to start looking at the climate prediction center's outlook for this uh for this cold air mass now i do think the climate prediction center uh if i were to do this map i would push it a little bit further to the east uh i think they are pushing this a little bit further to the west uh, just to see, th just because they're kind of uncertain on the timing, uh, but right now I think it's going to reach the east coast by the 6 to 10 day period and most and definitely by the 8 to 14 day period, it'll be the over the entire eastern half of the US. Now this is showing you the probability of seeing cooler than normal temperatures and we're seeing over parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, we're looking at between 50 and 60 percent. So that's a fairly high chance that you'll see below normal temperatures and uh, that stretches all the way up into the Great Lakes and all the way down into the southeast and if we look at your 8 to 14 day outlook we're looking at uh, that cold air still over the central and kind of moving into the eastern United States uh, and again I would move this a little bit further to the east by the 8 to 14 day outlook I would most likely have the cold air all the way towards the east but still we're seeing the cold uh, the center of the cold air over parts of the south central and the southeastern United States by this point. Now, uh, if you guys are wondering whether we're going to see any early snows for parts of uh, the Upper Great Lakes or parts of the interior in the interior northeast or northern New England, uh, I do think you might see a couple of those snow events, most likely in mid-October. Now, here's why. We're looking at within the 6 to 10 day outlook going from uh, no, uh, September 27th all the way to October 1st, we're looking at above normal precipitation for parts of the interior northeast. And when I'm talking about the interior northeast, I'm 
talking about uh, the mountainous regions of Vermont, New Hampshire, and interior Maine, and potentially parts of the Adirondacks in uh, upstate New York. That's really the area that sees the earliest snowfall, and when I'm talking about the upper Great Lakes, I'm really talking about for the area to see snow, the, probably the UP of Michigan, and maybe parts of interior Minnesota there, uh, where you can most likely see some snowfall, and then of course the Rockies always up uh, for potentially seeing some snowfall, and those areas, especially over the eastern United States, should see some more precipitation than normal, and I'm looking a little bit farther out in the models, and they are bringing quite a few storms dipping down from Canada, and it's pretty pretty much rapid fire, so if we see that pattern in the winter, that would equate to a lot of snowfall. Now, here's the 8 to 14 day outlook, and it's still centered over the northeast with that above normal precipitation, so some of that precipitation could accumulate to maybe an inch or two of snowfall. We'll still have to see, and I'll definitely track that if that does occur. Now, here is, uh, just if you were wondering, here is the European Ensemble model collecting about 50 models and showing you uh, the how much snowfall, if you were to average that out, how much snowfall you would see going through October 7th, early, early in the morning. Uh, and we're looking at, again, interior parts of Minnesota and also parts of Wisconsin and Michigan, and then all the way through parts of the Rockies, we're seeing some snowfall. We're seeing that snow line creeping further south into parts of Quebec, and then eventually that'll make its way into the interior northeast so definitely we're uh, getting into the fall uh, season or really starting to get into the heart of the fall and moving into the winter uh, time uh, this is the uh, the first day of, of fall officially uh, of course meteorological fall started September 1st but uh, in terms of uh, in terms of astronomical fall it is starting today and it will move all the way through into December so uh, definitely it'll be uh, very interesting to time out these storms with you guys and again I want to thank you guys for getting me to this point on my YouTube channel and helping me get this close to 1,000 subscribers when and if I do get to that point you will see that 1,000 subscribers thank you video go up on my channel so uh, again that I'll, uh, I'll end the video right here if you guys do want to subscribe please leave a like and turn on notifications and I'll see you guys in the next video goodbye